All right, should you be using a static class or a singleton? Well, I think maybe the answer is neither. And in this video, I wanted to go over a question from a Reddit thread that I thought was pretty interesting, and I think that it's worth discussing because I don't think the answer is quite as black and white as it's made out to be. Before I jump over to Reddit for us to review this, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go check out this thread and see what's up. All right, so the original poster here says, I have a class that connects to a database. I only ever want a single instance of that class. There will never be a need for this application to grow what is the best way to do this? And then they kind of call out two situations that they're trying to pull from. And it says, my understanding of object-oriented programming is to make it instantiable. Intuition is telling me that it should be a static class. So they're kind of going between either just a singleton or a static class. Now, I have a response to this that I wrote and I tried to keep it on track with what the OP is asking for, which is really static class or singleton. But I do think that it's a little bit more involved than that. And if I had to give them my answer that was outside of that, it would be neither. Now, before I go into that, I wanted to highlight this part in particular that says there will never be a need for this application to grow. And some of the responses on this thread are people going, well, you know, how can you say that that's kind of dangerous? It's like, you know, closed minded. But I think that it's important to look at this because we don't really have a lot of context for what this person's doing. So this could be over engineering if people are like, hey, look, like you're going to want to design to scale this up and, you know, future proof it. Like maybe, I mean, if I were doing this in a production, environment I probably would want to be thinking about that but if this is just a hobby project for this person to play around with and they're like look I just need this up and running and it's got some constraints and limitations I just need it to work like this is probably okay to pick between either static or a singleton but if I had to pick between the two I do have a preference so I'll share that and then I'll explain why I would probably pick neither given a little bit more flexibility so I have my response on the screen and basically what I was trying to get at is that I probably wouldn't use a static class, and I'm someone that's pretty adverse to using static classes in the first place. But with a static class and mixing in state, which is what you're going to have if you have a database connection, I think this is usually a recipe for a lot of bugs. One of the dangers with static classes is that you have access to it from basically anywhere in your application. And that means if there's state and anyone can access or play around with that state, you might get some undesired behavior because you can't really control who's accessing it. Depending on how complicated your app is, you might be in situations where people are manipulating that state, changing it, and other people are reading it at unexpected times and you just get behavior that's not really in your control so more often than not i will say like static classes in general not a huge fan of but a static class that really just has like read only information that's not changing like that's not so bad in my opinion now what i would do out of the two options is use a singleton so if you had to pick between static or singleton i would go with the singleton personally and the singleton gets a lot of flack right because it's like it's a little bit dangerous to use for the same reasons that a static class is but I think that the intent of a singleton, like the general purpose when we look at that design pattern, it's supposed to be that you're enforcing only a single instance allowed to be created. But what usually happens as a side effect is that we get global accessibility to that instance as well. I think by definition, the global accessibility part does not need to be a requirement, but I think the way that this gets implemented is that it's almost always a side effect of a singleton. And that's because if you're anywhere in your application and you tried to make a new instance of this, you need to be able to prevent it. So it's almost like from anywhere in the application, you need to ensure that you can't create a new one. But the only way that you can kind of enforce that is if you have global information about that state. So I don't think that's the intent with the singleton, but I do think it's a side effect generally. And because that's the general side effect, it kind of puts you in the same position as a static class, which is why I don't really like either of these. But I would go with the singleton just because when it comes to refactoring things later, if you needed to, that moving away from the static class to a singleton and then from a singleton to something like constructor parameter passing, I think works a little bit nicer. You start to have a little bit more control when you have a singleton and you can enforce where people are accessing it from if you start passing it around instead of just having this static class that you can access from anywhere. So as soon as you start to have an instance that can be moved around, I think that's where you start to get into some access control 
that you have some flexibility over at least. So what I recommended to this person is basically if you're picking between just those two things, I would go with the singleton. And then I said, really, the thing that I want you to be careful about is this idea that you can access this from anywhere. So try to make sure that you're controlling and being careful about where that state is managed. Okay, but what would I do instead of just using static or a singleton? Well, generally what I would do is try to think about our dependency injection framework so we have access to. And you don't need a dependency injection framework for this, but some of the concepts really are applicable here. So with a lot of the DI frameworks we use, we can say that we want to create something and really just make one instance of it. It doesn't enforce that no one else can make an instance of it. It just means that when we are using a DI framework, that only one thing will get created. And that's probably what I would recommend to this person here, even if they're not using a DI framework, is you have full control over it. You're saying that it's not really going to grow in complexity. Just make an instance of the thing. Make one one instance and pass it around. You don't need the singleton design pattern to be able to enforce that single creation because if it's really that simple, you just make one instance of it right at the top. And that way you can move away from the static and have the global accessibility. You can move away from the generic singleton type of implementation that also has that global accessibility. You create your single instance and you start passing it in through the constructor. You want to use a DI framework, even easier. You still use constructor parameter passing, but your DI framework can basically help enforce that single instance creation. Now, with this question, we don't have a lot of context into the state of the application. So, for example, maybe this person started using static already. I've worked in situations where I've had static classes scattered everywhere with state that was shared and pretty messy. And what I ended up doing was refactoring the code slowly to start using a singleton reference. What was nice about having that singleton reference is that over time, again, I could start passing that in through the constructor, which meant that I had some places that were going away with static, other places getting the singleton instance introduced in favor of that static, and then other places where the singleton was going away because I was able to start passing in the reference through the constructor. And at the top level, it was still that singleton reference which is kind of interesting because all that I was doing was slowly chipping away at being able to pass it in through the constructor. And over time, this was a refactor that took, you know, a very long period of time. But by the end of it, I ended up having a singleton that was called in one spot, right? And then it gets passed in the constructor and then passed down, so on and so forth. And at that point, I could just switch it over to get rid of the singleton entirely and just use dependency injection and basically create a single instance, have it automatically resolved, and the singleton and the static are completely gone at that point. If you're interested in seeing what a refactoring like that looks like, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.